time once again to stop pyramid schemes, scams, and other forms of corruption. If you missed your chance to pick up the original Illuminati pyramid plushie with an eye out for corruption, don't fear, she's back and better than ever. Makeship is doing a time warp campaign and they're relaunching some of the original campaigns and my plushie is one of them. So if you missed your chance about what, two, two and a half years ago at this point to grab the original pyramid plushie with the magnifying glass, she's back, but only for about two weeks. So if you wanna get your hands on one, head on over to makeship.com or just click the link in the description box to go right to my plushie. Legos have gone woke. Disney has gone woke. Even M&Ms have succumbed to the woke mind virus, but hold on. What does woke even mean? Let's ask Bethany Mendel, who wrote an entire book on the object horrors of woke culture. I'm sure she'll have a clear and concise explanation. Bethany? Could, could, would you mind defining woke? Cause it's come up a couple of times and I just wanna make sure we're on the same page. So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that, um, I, this is gonna be one of those moments that goes viral. I mean, sorry, I. It's, it's hard to explain in a 15 second soundbite. Well, yeah, look, your it, time. Okay, well, um, so it seems like that helped absolutely no one, but that's okay. We have a bunch of other people we can turn to who consistently discuss this new detrimental phenomenon. Let's turn to Fox News. They seem to be the ones that talk about this the most. So obviously they should have the best definition, right? But it's sort of like the Supreme Court definition of pornography, you know it when you see it. So. The Democrats want to get you in an argument where you're having to define de defined wokeism as if the Webster's Dictionary is defining it. And that's not what it is. It is a, it, it, it could be a feeling, it could be a sense. According to Fox News, woke is more like a feeling. It isn't something that has to be defined. I got it, I got it, okay. But what type of feeling? Is it the type of feeling I get when I pull my nachos out of the microwave and find that the cheese hasn't melted quite right? No? Okay, so this is why we need definitions, people, because uh, direction's unclear. But for people who can't just seem to define what exactly woke is, they certainly seem pretty damn terrified of it. Over the last few years, we have seen politicians, journalists, and just normal everyday people use this word to describe virtually everything that has remotely changed since 1950. Oh no, women can work now, support themselves and get a credit card? It's the curse of the woke mind virus, Ooh. <laughs> But like, seriously, people can go to school and learn about the real history of the United States and oh my God, we're not as perfect as the propaganda is and we're actually kind of a terrible country too, just like every other fucking country. Oh my God, it's blasphemy. No way, no, 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 not blasphemy. It's woke behavior. And while all of this is relatively amusing to watch, there are some very real dangers associated with this new uptick in outrage over seemingly meaningless things. As people are screaming out of their fricking skulls about M&Ms desexualizing a damn candy, others are using the exact same rhetoric to abolish DEI programs, enact anti-trans legislation, and ban books with no regard for the consequences. Sure, it's all a stupid made up circus act, but there's a lot more going on behind the razzle dazzle of it all that should certainly make us stop and think for a second. So today I wanna talk about it. Why did the word woke suddenly become the calling card for every right wing grifter in the world? What are they really saying? And what are the consequences? I'm the Illuminati and this is the corporate casket. Before the word woke was co-opted by people who clearly have no idea what it means, it actually had a pretty easy definition as well as a pretty self-explanatory origin. In essence, woke was vernacular commonly used in the black community that simply meant being aware of the world around you. The term stay woke has been around for literally decades and has been used consistently throughout time as a way to describe waking up to reality or being aware of the dangers of society. It just meant that you knew what the fuck was going on. It really was that simple. And for the better part of our history, it was a relatively unused term for anyone outside of the black community. But as the dawn of widespread social justice campaigns came about, such as Black Lives Matter, the word has been progressively co-opted and appropriated. 
Now, for liberals and other left-leaning folks, the meaning has remained relatively the same. It's just becoming more indicative of someone that is at least relatively aware of the hierarchies and oppression in society. Though that didn't mean people who use the word actually did anything with this knowledge. And yes, my dear liberals and softy centrists who know what's happening in the world and do absolutely nothing to try and fix it, I'm talking to you too. But for right-wing people, the word woke took on a whole new meaning. The Atlantic argues that the word is now used as just another descriptor for progressive or liberal, but in a derogatory manner. But I have a different view of it. When we look at just some of the ways that this word has been used, we start to actually see the bigger picture. In September, 2022, the first trailer for the live action version of The Little Mermaid starring Halle Berry was released. Almost immediately, people started to collectively lose their damn minds, claiming that Disney had officially gone woke by casting a black Ariel, who remember, and might I add, is a made up character in a kid's movie. Mermaids are not real, but apparently we had an issue with race of a fictional creature that uh, does not exist in reality. But anyway, and actually no, not anyway, as another side tangent, I remember reading something around this time of like an article or something that came out that if mermaids were actually real, their skin actually would be darker. They would not have pale skin and red hair like Ariel was depicted like 50 years ago or whatever because of like interacting with the sun and everything, they would naturally kind of start to tan skin and the melanin would become more present. Anyway, now I digress, let's go back. The new Ariel trailer was met with nearly 2 million dislikes and a constant barrage of comments saying that Disney had gone too far. Suddenly, everyone in the world had an opinion about the movie and was shocked that people would not stick to the original Little Mermaid. Some claimed it was scientifically inaccurate to cast Bailey in the role. Everyone's best friend, Matt Walsh, who I had to recently learn who this fucker was, said this. If anything, not only should the Little Mermaid be pale, she should actually be translucent. If you look at deep sea creatures, they're like translucent. They have no kind of pigmentation whatsoever. And okay, so I'm not gonna act like some sort of fancy fish expert, but Google is the thing that exists. So let me go ahead and look it up. So da, 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 type, type, oh. Look at that. There are multiple fish that live at the bottom of the ocean that are in fact not translucent and are in fact black. This includes one that does look absolutely terrifying, by the way, it's named the Atlantic wolf fish. Maybe Matt should go ahead and try and give that one a cute little pet. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to his hand or any other important bodily appendages during the course of his education process. Now, to be clear, his argument is obviously insane. And I would again like to point out that uh, she is in fact a mermaid, which does not exist, okay? So sorry to hurt your feelings if you didn't know that yet, but um, mermaids are not real. Um, So this whole argument over a fictional creature is actually fucking insane. But let's move on to another example, shall we? Just a couple months ago, Disney decided to create a new show with everyone's favorite adorable marshmallow robot, Baymax. In it, a scene with the squishy bundle of joy depicts Baymax searching through menstrual products and asking for assistance with which to choose. Almost immediately, everyone and around the aisle steps in to help, including a person wearing a transgender flag t-shirt. So people automatically assumed that they were a transgender male. In all, it was an adorable spot and I'm sure it made people feel seen. But Brett Cooper, the new darling of Daily Wire, was in her studio meticulously designed to look like a streamer's bedroom, decided that the inclusion was the worst display of wokeness ever in the history of ever. Obviously, this was Disney's gay agenda. A company that had meticulously created heterosexual romance for decades all of a sudden has a gay agenda. Sure thing, babes, whatever makes you sleep better at night. Then of course, there is the recent Legos disaster. So run for your lives, Legos has gone woke, blah, 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 blah. They have inclusive Legos now. So Legos recently announced that they would expand their character range to be more representative. Some characters will have Down syndrome, limb differences, anxiety, and more. Don't ask me how they're going to depict a Lego with anxiety. I have no idea, but it's still very cool. Basically, a lot of people will now have a character that actually represents them. And to Fox News, this was terrible news. They found it divisive and terrible. One host said that Legos were causing a divide in the country. Sorry, I I meant to say that with like a straight face, but I just, I can't. Anyway, here's the quote. Republicans think it's insane that they are forcing identity politics in Legos. Democrats are upset that they didn't make a drag queen stripper. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think Democrats even remotely care what Legos is doing. You're just trying to create controversy on the dumbest issue in the world when it literally does not exist, except maybe in your head. 
And of course, we obviously cannot forget one of the most recent woke controversies from good old Candace Owens, who recently lost her absolute shit because an underwear company portrayed a person in a wheelchair within their ads. I'm serious. In her absolutely mindless rant, she literally said that representation is not important. The real kicker, Skims, the company she was criticizing, was making an entire line of accessible underwear, and that's why they were showing someone in a wheelchair. So newsflash, Candace, some people need things made in a particular way so they can actually use them. A company making inclusive products has absolutely nothing to do with you. If you're that opposed to underwear, don't wear any. There is a thing called commando. You can get on board with that if that's your cup of tea, but leave other people be. But now that we've gone through just a few examples, have you started to notice a trend? Woke isn't going against liberals or liberal policies. It's going against people. The Little Mermaid is woke because she's black. Baymax is woke because there's a trans character, and Legos is woke for simply acknowledging that disabilities exist. Woke has become yet another symbol for people different from white, cis, straight, able-bodied people. Woke is just another dog whistle so people who are racist, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist don't have to come out and say what they really are. That's all it's become. And when you think about that definition, then the manner of how they're using it becomes that much scarier. While they go off about the dumbest things in the entire world, this rhetoric is not limited to stupid cable TV shows and idiotic video streams. It's worked its way into a variety of social structures, and that's where the real danger comes in. Public schools in the United States have gone woke. And of course, we all know what that actually means. Over the last few years, we have seen an unprecedented attack on the American public education system and the woke teaching values that some claim exists. Leading the charge is the Twitter account Libs of TikTok. Every day they post allegedly shocking videos of teachers who basically just show an ounce of support for their students who are not straight, white, or cisgender. Through the use of inflammatory statements, Libs of TikTok takes everyday instances of teachers simply trying to do their jobs and make them sound as if these teachers have told their kids that like Santa Claus doesn't exist or something. Like God forbid teachers mention that gay, transgender, or non-binary people exist, or if they fit in any of those categories themselves. While this whole thing feels outrageously ridiculous, it has caught fire and the account has roughly 2 million followers on Twitter. Now we are seeing the effects of this as the trust between parents and students has severely diminished. It doesn't help that companies like PragerU are also telling parents that their kids are being, and I quote, absolutely damaged by the education system. The Heritage Foundation, which has been the leading voice in false science and false panic, has also stepped in and written op-eds claiming that woke capital is transforming education into a field for transgender activism. According to them, schools are instructing students to trust gender ideology over trusted adults. Teachers are allegedly encouraging students to socially transition at school and keep changes strictly under wraps from parents, which in some cases might be true, but why? That's the part they usually miss. For a kid to feel safe discussing their personal feelings with teachers, they need to do so without fear that those personal feelings would be disclosed to others without their permission. How would you feel if you told someone a secret and they immediately went to tell someone else who may put you in danger if they were to know that secret? Transgender kids in particular are some of the most likely children to be forcibly kicked out of their homes by their parents. That is a calculation both by the student and the teacher that they need to do in their minds before they decide if they want to come out to their family or not. And for some parents, this can feel like a stab in the back. Yes, parents have the right to know what's going on with their children, but do they have the right to know what's going on with their children if they're going to use it against them? I don't think they do. But that's not for me to decide. As we speak, there are multiple lawsuits in the works to decide if teachers will be legally obligated to tell parents if students are showing signs of gender non-conforming behavior. And while they claim this is all about parents' rights, I see it a little bit differently, as do others. Kel Olson, who is a staff attorney at Lambda Legal says, I can't help but recognize that although parents' rights has been proposed as the basis and framework for a lot of these things, a large concern is not necessarily parents' rights, but parental fear of LGBTQ people and trying to control access to that by young people. And here's the thing, if you are a safe person for your kid to speak to about how they're feeling, they'll do that. And if they feel the need to hide it from you, then it sounds like you have some issues that you need to work out. It's not on the teacher and it sure as hell isn't on the kid. It's kind of on you as the adult to, you know, be the adult. Speaking of that statement, isn't that what all this outrage around wokeism is really being used for? To shift the blame? 
Before everything was about how schools were going woke with gender ideology, people were attacking schools going woke because of CRT being taught in grade school, which once again, it's still not. Critical race theory is a legal theory that's usually taught in law school. It's not for fifth graders. In reality, it wasn't about CRT at all. It was simply about teaching the realities of United States history, which newsflash, it consists of a lot of horrible things done by white people to black people and other people of color to oppress them. It's not about making people feel bad or making fifth graders feel like they should have to apologize to every person they see for racism being a thing that exists. It's simply about learning the history of the country, how that history impacts us now and how we can maybe be better in the future. For people that consistently complain about people needing safe spaces, they sure as hell are trying their best to ensure that white children feel safe from having to learn about that history of the country and that the history isn't pretty. And you know, oh, how they maybe will have to learn that good old great grandpa John may have been in one of those pictures from Jim Crow, Mississippi. Black kids and other kids know about this already. It's the white kids that everyone is trying to, air quotes here, protect. Still, as unfounded and frankly idiotic as the calls against woke education systems seem, they're having a massive impact on how schools can run. But we'll talk about that a little later when we discuss the laws that have come barreling into our country to address the woke mind virus. For now, let's look at what else has apparently gone woke, capitalism. It's a pretty ludicrous idea to say that capitalism in the United States has gone woke during the current moment. We are seeing round after round of layoffs from giant corporations, rising costs on even the simplest of items, and people slowly but surely running out of options for how they can even survive in this economy. Forget about thriving. But despite all of this, some people claim that companies have just gone too far in the woke direction. Where is this happening? Well, I have no idea. I would love for someone to show me a handful of companies that are actually doing anything relatively good beyond a few inspiring commercials. But none of that seems to matter when employers are requiring people to go through the absolute horrors of DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion training. If you don't think that sounds so terrible, let me turn your attention to an article in The Federalist written by John Soriano about how he survived the terrifying and harrowing experience of learning how to treat people with empathy. According to John, his woke boss was chomping at the bit to develop racial equity in the company. Oh, the humanity. Because of this, he was forced to be the representative for Latin people in DEI training, where he slayed the dragon of the term Latin X. Little did he know that discussing how people should be referred to is one of the most woke things you can actually do. Voicing your concerns is the whole point of these meetings, but he acted as if changing the vernacular was a middle finger to the whole process. He got so close to the point and then just flew straight off the cliff. After he took his mental victory lap, which are his words, not mine, he was forced to deal with the oh so terrifying DEI consultants. In the three hour training, he was thrown into the world of studies and expertise about subjects such as colorblindness, mediocrity, and microaggressions, which, oh, you poor thing, it must've been such an experience. And after his job enforced vaccination requirements, he quit but he did live to tell his remarkable story. Throughout the course of the article, he used the word woke 17 times, might I add. In total, he spent probably four hours of his life in DEI training, and the way he describes it, it was like he went to war, but it's not. It was four hours of your life and you were paid to be there. You don't have to agree with any of it, but you do have to listen. Regardless, this is the terrible woke monster that people are trying to slay all over the country. Over just the last year, about 44 bills in 16 states have been developed that seek to punish companies that adopt any type of DEI strategy or promote any type of woke messaging on climate change, diversity, or any other social issues. The phrase go woke and go broke has been a very common and very stupid expression used by a lot of these folks. Banks in particular have also apparently gone too far. Take the recent collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. It didn't just crash because it overextended itself and made terrible business decisions. No, 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 don't, don't, be, don't be silly, don't be a goofy little bean. According to some right-leaning people on social media, it crashed because of its woke agenda, because <laughs> of course. One user wrote, the woke agenda coming from SVB is in large part to blame for their failure. The insane left-wing agenda is bankrupting our future. Go woke, get broke. And yes, because the left was who promoted the deregulation of banks. You got that one, chief. Oh, oh, wait, wait, no, 
That was Donald Trump who apparently did that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, apparently that was Donald Trump, not the woke left. You can go ahead and take your several seats and take them quickly. Now, regardless, other people have claimed that their 2022 environmental report that committed $5 billion in loans to sustainability efforts by 2027 is what actually destroyed them. Meanwhile, others still were saying that it was the investment into racial justice causes or their Pride Month campaign that killed them. And for those to be even remotely true, you would assume that they mean people had stopped putting their money into the bank because they didn't agree with those policies. But that's not what happened. Plenty of people had money in the bank. The bank just used the money wrong, and that's what killed them. And funny enough, banks in the past have done this too, way before there was a woke agenda, so how do you explain them apples? Now, of course, despite the logical explanation being the correct one, people want to shift the blame to the wokeness, and this is just one example of what banks are dealing with when it comes to the woke hysteria. Others like JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Goldman Sachs have been cut out of bond markets because they promised to boycott energy companies in Texas that speak out against the firearm industry. Others have been sidelined for subsidizing abortions. So let me be clear here. This isn't about preventing an ideology. This is about control. When states step in to sideline banks because they show an ounce of social awareness, it isn't done to stop the banks from spreading that ideology. Who the hell cares what banks think? It's about controlling the narrative in their own state and limiting the amount of access their citizens have to companies that may actually help them. That's what this is about. And just remember, the Republican party, the right, they love to be the party of small government. This is not very small government of them. Just remember, this is really about control. But unfortunately, banks aren't the only ones who have seen increasing anti-woke measures. Just over the last year, we have seen legislatures develop policies attacking schools, corporations, and general populations at the speed of light. And before we take a moment to talk about all of this new anti-woke agenda and population control and legislation, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor. Check in with yourself before offering to help someone else. Rest when you need rest and ask for what you need and say yes to more things that make you feel good. Transport your mind to a world where you can relax and treat yourself to your deepest desires with Dipsy. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. New content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and even sexy stories you can read if that's more of your vibe. So let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com casket. Again, that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipseastories.com slash casket, dipsystories.com slash casket. Now, you didn't think we'd get through an entire episode about Woke Mind Virus without talking about the anti-woke gremlin himself, did you? Obviously, I'm talking about the governor of the country's most chaotic state, Florida, and I'm speaking about Ron DeSantis. Now, despite the state being called one of the worst places to raise a family, having rising rent prices and other terrifying statistics, Ron has decided that it was prudent to, instead of, you know, focusing on the real issues, focus on attacking the wokeness in public universities. Recently, he introduced the Stop Woke, Wrongs to Our Kids and Employees Act, which prohibits schools and businesses from, quote, teaching students and employees anything that could cause anyone to feel guilt, anguish, or any form of psychological distress due to their race, color, sex, or national ordinance. I also love that he turned woke into an acronym just to add a bit of, you know, spice to the name. And in addition to that super broad definition of what isn't allowed, DeSantis is also barring university professors from talking about the state's voting laws and has said that public college employees have no right to freedom of speech. So <laughs> let that one sink in. People are allowed to critique you or educate others about the horrendous voting laws you've enacted to stop people from being able to vote against you. That is perfectly within their first amendment rights. Again, for a Republican right-leaning person who again, small government and all about the first amendment, this isn't, this isn't very policy of you. This whole line of rules brings a certain word to mind. Um, darn, what is that word? Oh, fascism. Yeah, that's what it's starting to feel like. Now, as always, these new laws have nothing to do with protecting the children from you know, having to be uncomfortable during their lectures. This is again about control. It's controlling what people know about our history. And for DeSantis, 
It's controlling what people know about our present too. The broadness of the act isn't an accident either, might I add. It's meant to scare people out of discussing anything having to do with gender and race and its working. Even before a Florida judge thankfully blocked certain aspects of the law after calling it positively dystopian, schools and teachers were already self-censoring their material. Some schools removed their anti-racist statements from websites, while others canceled courses on race in fear that they would be breaching this new law. It's clear that his plan was working and Florida is not done dealing with this type of anti-woke bullshit. In addition to the rising amount of book bans, anti-woke bills, and don't say gay laws, which yes, those are coming back, and of course, anti-trans legislation, there is certainly more on the horizon. And that includes a law that apparently would prohibit school instruction on human sexuality in elementary school, including discussions about menstrual cycles, because apparently it's too woke to tell girls what's happening to their own fucking bodies. And then of course, this is more of recent news, but just to kind of tag this in here, uh, Ron DeSantis also had this like panel to deregulate Disney and their kind of special tax exemptions and stuff like that. So Disney just worked within the rules and now gave that little panel that Ron set up no power for like the next 50 years. And I just wanna remind you, the mouse always wins. Like the mouse is like the house at a casino. It always wins. You fuck with the mouse, you get the bite. So anyway, in conclusion on that statement, I just wanna say I'm very excited to find when Florida falls that it's gonna become our new 50th state, Disney World, with the new capital being called like Mouse House or something. So anyway. Unfortunately though, good old Ronnie boy is not the only one spearheading these ridiculous anti-woke laws. They're popping up everywhere around this country. In Missouri, a bill that prohibits state universities from requiring diversity statements is going through the house as we speak. Meanwhile, in South Carolina, Republicans are committing a probe on their higher education institutions regarding how much they spend on programs and activities that are related to race or sexual orientation. One can only think that they're doing this so they can argue that no matter what the budgets are, they're spending too much money on these programs and they need to be shut down because after all, go woke, go broke, right? North Dakota has recently decided to take a page out of Ron's playbook and introduce bill SB 2247, which restricts the teaching of divisive concepts in classrooms, orientations, and workshops. It also prohibits mandatory training in divisive concepts and requires that any DEI employee have duties that include, quote, efforts to strengthen and increase intellectual diversity among students and faculty. And if you're wondering what the hell that means, so am I. Of course, this type of law comes with the same questions as Florida's anti-woke bills. The parameters are far too broad and many are concerned that it will impede on universities' ability to discuss any topics that have anything to do with race, gender, or sex. The whole idea of higher education is to teach people to question everything. It's about learning and developing your critical thinking skills. And these types of bills just kneecap that ability. Will people be able to discuss the work of Martin Luther King Jr., of Malcolm X, Angela Davis? Maybe but maybe not. It might just be too divisive. Still, these bills just keep growing and are attacking anything the right claims is woke, including of course, anything regarding the LGBTQ community. The ACLU has been tracking the bills popping up over the country and so far, they've found over 430 anti-gay laws that have been introduced just this year in 2023. We're not even halfway through the year and there's over 430 bills. That's incredible in all the worst ways. Some of these bills forbid transgender students from participating in school sports. Texas recently put forward a bill that closed a loophole for people competing with teams that don't match their sex assigned at birth. Originally, people could participate if they changed their birth certificates to match their gender identity, which is jumping through a bunch of hoops already. But now they're ensuring that even doing that won't be enough to let people play on teams that match their gender identity. Other bills are going to force teachers to out their students, something that we've talked about earlier. Arizona, for example, put forward a bill that would forbid teachers from withholding information about their students' purported gender identity and would allow parents to sue the schools if the teachers didn't comply. Everywhere you look, there seems to be another horrendous bill popping up that claims to go against the woke agenda. But again, that's not what it's about. Do you remember what it's about? Everyone come say it with me now, control. While it may be fun to laugh at the ridiculous claims that banks or Legos have somehow gone woke, the real life consequences of this hysteria-driven narrative are happening all around us. People have successfully co-opted a word meant to portray knowledge and turned it into a way to spread hate. This isn't the first time this has happened. It sure as hell won't be the last. 
So for right now, that's the end of today's episode. This will continue to develop. This is a topic I do talk about frequently on The Leftist Mafia, which is a podcast kind of live stream that I do every Thursday night, 5.30 PST over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Illuminati, and also on my second YouTube channel, Illuminati T-E-A. So if you wanna stay up to date on current events and what's going on, make sure to check out that episode every Thursday, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Or I guess maybe it's PDT right now because of the time zone change. I don't freaking know. The time zone change is going away soon. So who cares very shortly? You guys know, whatever it is in, in California time, 5.30 that time. With that being said though, that is the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me to the end. I do really hope you enjoyed it because I know I don't really kind of talk about topics like this, but I found it so completely absurd that we really just needed to get to the meat of this problem. But again, with all of that being said, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.